Mountains into Plains. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, Then he said to me, The continuous supply of oil is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, prince of Judah, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, of whom the oil is a symbol, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain of obstacles? Before Zerubbabel, who will rebuild the temple, you will become a plain, insignificant, and he will bring out the capstone of the new temple with loud shouts of grace, grace to it. Hallelujah. And we say grace to it, to the mountain of obstacles that may be in front of us. And an obstacle could be any one of so many things. It could be a letter giving you some bad news, or it could be that you need to move out of the place that you might be living, or it may be a mountain of debt, a mountain of uh, a relationship problem where you're getting a divorce. It could be a mountain of sickness. It could be a mountain in front of you regarding your children. It could be a mountain of so many different things. But those mountains, the Lord says, not by your strength, not by power or by your strength, but by my spirit, those mountains become plains. And going over the mountain or around the mountain, it can leave us, it can leave us stuck where we are. It can leave us not being able to move. And it might leave us in such a place of worry and anxiety that we might get stuck in a certain place. But the Lord has always told us that we can expect mountains along the way, that we can expect trials, tribulations, and mountains. But he also says that he will walk with us. He will be with us in the fire. He will be with us in the flood. He will be with us when waters try to overtake us and the waves of the storm try to drown us or squash us down. That means the enemy as well speaking to us. You're never going to do anything worthwhile. You're not going to get out of this debt. You're not going to resolve your marriage. Your kids are never going to be saved. Your kids are never going to amount to anything good. Those are mountains. Those are mountains that when we are going through them, they seem so gigantous in our natural state of vision. In our vision, we only see the bigness the giant problem before us. But the Lord is saying in Zechariah 4 verses 6 through 7 that we should depend on his spirit and declare grace to it. Declare grace to that mountain. Declare grace to that mountain and tell that mountain how big your God is. Don't tell God how big your mountain is. And we become in front of the mountain. We become fearful. We become like we are stunted, like we are anesthetized. We don't know where to go, what to do. In those times of our lives where we have a mountain before us, of something that we cannot resolve on our own strength. We cannot resolve it by any means. 
If this mountain is going to move, the only way this mountain will move is by the Lord moving it and creating it, reducing it to a plane, leveled and flat, like it never existed. And here in this Bible verse, it says, you will become a plane, insignificant. Only the Lord can do that for us. He says that a tall mountain will be like a flat place. For us, in our point of view, in our humanness, in our human finite mind, that seems impossible. However, when the Lord All-Powerful begins to work on our situation, the possibility comes into view. More and more, day by day, the way forward through the mountain becomes clear as you begin to go through the opening and the next steps to take would become known to you by the Lord, by His Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord will then make the path into the mountain clear or around the mountain. all-powerful God. He will always, when we trust in Him, when we believe Him, when we declare His might and His power over a situation, He will take us to a successful conclusion. What do you do when you have a mountain-sized problem before you? in front of you, that wants to scare you, that wants to bully you? What do you do when you have a giant in front of you like David did? We should go straight to it, face to face, head on, and declare our faith to that giant. Declare how great our God is to that giant. Declare the miracles that God has done in the past. We say it, we declare it to that giant and we say grace to it. We apply grace to it. We apply our words. We apply our prayers. We apply our fasting. We sing, we dance, and we stomp our feet and clap our hands in celebration. Even before the problem has been solved, even before the miracle happens, we should be thanking the Lord and rejoicing for the miracle and the successful conclusion that He will bring about in our lives regarding that mountain, regarding that obstacle. And when Moses led the people of Israel through the Red Sea on dry land. In Exodus 15, 1 through 21, there is a wonderful song. It's a wonderful prayer. It is like a poem, but it's a song and it's verses that declare the greatness and the power and the, and the amazing might of our Lord and God when he led his people out of Egypt away from Pharaoh that had all of them enslaved and he led them out of Pharaoh's hand and Pharaoh's slavery he led them out of Egypt into the land into the promised land into the place where he, they would live in safety, in the place where he was going to provide. He was going to provide manna. He was going to provide their shoes. Their shoes, they never got, they never got worn out. None of them, not one person was lost in the Exodus that day. And today, we are going to sing and we're going to we're going to recite this prayer 
to the Lord in expectancy of great and mighty things that He is going to do in our lives even before it happens, even before we see our miracle as a successful conclusion, we are going to say thank you and we are going to praise in a mighty, mighty way. This is Exodus 15, 1 through 21. And it says, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Dead Sea, in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed the, them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoil. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemy. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed in your strength. You will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them by the power of your arm. They will be as still as a stone until your people pass by, Lord, until the people you brought and bought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands established. The Lord reigns forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all of the women followed her. With trembles and dancing, Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is exalted, both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea and we declare father god that the horse and the driver has been hurled into the sea for each and every one of our lives for my life and for the life of my friend listening to this audio and that their mountains will become leveled plain and we declare grace to it father god thank you let us pray Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We give you praise and honor and glory, my Father, that you have laid the foundations, Father God, before us, O God. You have laid the foundations, my Father, of prayer. You have laid the foundation of speaking the word of God, speaking grace to it, my Father, speaking to the mountain, my God, that you have given us the authority for the mountain to move, my God. And we just say thank you, Lord God, by the power Father God, that you have vested in us, O God, by the blood of Jesus that paid the price, Father God, for us, O God, and you have 
allowed us and you give us the authority and the blessing, my God, to speak grace to the mountain, to speak grace to it and say, move in the name of Jesus. My Father, thank you that every mountain, Father God, is being leveled right now in Jesus' name. Mountains of financial debt, mountains of of uh, relational mountains, my God, mountains of disease, mountains, my Father, of people not having a place to live, mountains of poverty, mountains of defeat, mountains of depression, mountains of anxiety, mountains, oh God, of addictions, my Father, mountains, oh God, Father God, of so many different things that we live in this world, oh God, and we say grace to it, my God. And we declare, oh God, and we decree, oh God, that you are a great big God. And Father, we give you all the praise, my Father. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and we exalt your holy name on high, oh God. There is no other God like you, my Father. And Lord God, we say thank you before it happens. We are going to continue thanking you. We are going to continue being in an attitude of joy and thanksgiving and rejoicing as if the miracle had already happened. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, in your son name we pray today in Jesus name may you seal this prayer and this devotional with the sweetness of your Holy Spirit Lord God amen and amen <music>